video has been brought to you by OTR Films. And yeah, I shot this joint while grilling. Y'all gonna have to take care. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm pretty good. This is Ricky Rocks from OTR Films, Breaking the Ice. And this is... Naya Janae. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. Alright, well, now that we're here, can you tell the fans about, you know, where does your music background come from? Yeah, um, my music background comes from 90s R&B. Like, that's a okay. major inspiration for me. Um, I love... I love uh, Mariah, Whitney, um, okay. Aaliyah, uh, just any R&B from the that classics. era, the classics, <laughs> that sound. And I also like the funky sound, like Erica, oh, okay. Jill Scott. I just mix mix all of them together, and that's a little bit of my sound. Okay. So um, when you were first getting started making music, can you kind of tell us what the lifestyle was like? What were you doing? Were you in school? Yeah. Um, when I first, first started? Um, I was in school, I was in college, and I was doing like a lot of open mic shows. Um, I did things underground. I went to ECU, so I would do like the underground shows, those open mics. also did poetry, so I would like link up with my poet friends, and they spit some poetry, and I sing. And um, yeah, that was a big like part of where I gained the following. Like college okay. people really, really rock with me. And then, you know, we graduated, and I just kind of kept doing it. Wow, that's beautiful. That's yeah. kind of how you, everybody gets their confidence. You know, yeah. they start amongst their peers, yeah. and then um, other people start to take notice. Yeah. So when was it when you finally realized that you had something or a, a serious talent to where you could take it to the mainstream? Yeah. Um, for me, it's been like a, a slow, gradual process. Like, in the beginning, I know I was more... I was a little bit more reserved and didn't quite know exactly what I was doing, what my sound was, the direction I was going to take it. Um, mm -hmm. But the more I worked and the more that I put out or created sounds and had songs, maybe not released to the public, I kind of tailored what I wanted to be there. And once I got that sound where I felt like I was comfortable and it was exactly what I needed to present to the world, um, that was when I knew I had it. And I felt like I mean, I was, that's been over the past couple of years. It's been fairly recently where I was like, I got it. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to walk in it. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Taking it serious now. <laughs> yeah. So um, what are the things that are starting to come now that you have a name for yourself? Are anybody asking for features or oh, yeah. people trying to work? Yeah. Um, I get a lot of messages on Instagram. Like <laughs> my, uh, yeah. what's it called? The ones request the message request yep yep full never empty <laughs> um and i just have to kind of filter through all of it because sometimes it's sometimes it could be like le legit people or people that's really trying to work sometimes it's the, i feel like the bots and then sometimes <laughs> it's just like people who don't really yeah they it's don't have bullshit. no per they just there <laughs> to, to talk so yep yep they try <laughs> to get in with it though <laughs> Yeah, you got to kind of filter your uh, your inbox and everything. You got to yeah. make sure it's uh, business-oriented, exactly. you know. You can yeah. find the other stuff elsewhere. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but um, tell us about where you're from. Oh, where I'm from? I'm from the country. Oh. So I'm from this tiny town called Farmville, North Carolina, in eastern North Carolina. Um, it's near New Bern, if people have heard of that. Mm. But it is uh, itty-bitty. Everyone is related. Um, my high school, my elementary school, and my middle school were separated by a ditch. So, yeah. we used to say, you going across the ditch next year? Like <laughs> The ditch? Yeah, literally, a okay. ditch. Okay, yeah, that's some country <laughs> shit for so sure. Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, when you were growing up, mm -hmm. did you have any idea you'd be doing this when you were a child? Oh, yeah. I used to shake the figure eight ball and be like, am I going to be famous when I grow up? And then be like, absolutely. And I'm just like... Yeah, <laughs> I told mom I'm gonna get a maid. That's why I don't like to clean my room. But now I'm better and I can keep myself. You know, you know, you're a kid. Yeah, you just be like, mm, I'm not gonna have to do this. Right, right. At least that's how I was. Yeah, your imagination <laughs> must have been crazy to Definitely. believe you could do this. This is amazing. Um, Definitely. Um, how has your performance been? Um, have you had any shows recently? Yeah. So with the with the pandemic, I've done Instagram live shows. 
Um, but I haven't really done like any show shows in a while back, like 2018, before I moved from Charlotte. I used to do shows like in Moorhead Tavern and places like that around Charlotte. Um, and they would be, I mean, they would be lit. I'm, I'm really big on crowd engagement. I feel like the people in the room make the room. So I want the crowd to feel special so that they can make me feel special. Right. So I kind of like to have like a little love affair with the audience. That's my style with it. Okay. You know how to connect with the audience. Yeah. And that's that's really what you need to be a star. That's yeah. how you know you're a star. Yeah. Is when they feel you. So you're definitely doing something right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tap into your personal life a little bit more. Mm. Um. <laughs> And really, we're going to start life, okay. uh, start light, you know, right, um, right. I was thinking like of a question for you and I thought of what would you, if you were stuck on an island mm -hmm. and you could pick one movie, um, one book and one TV show to watch, what would you pick? Okay. So the book would be Seat to the Soul, a seat, uh, your seat to the Soul. Okay. Um, that's a good book. Um, Can you tell me, tell us about what it's about? It's about following your your soul like serving your soul so you have to be in alignment with your soul and for me like that book was part of my like inner child awakening and getting, okay. like believing in myself and knowing it, it covers everything from responsibility to like um it has a chapter on reincarnation it's it's a really interesting mm. book but it's about just how people some people are multi-sensory and the multi-sensory person is aware of uh of more than just the five senses hmm. um, and how that extra sensory um, realm plays a large part in your development and people don't realize that so really deep book really good book. help you find your purpose help so, me, definitely so what movie would you pick movie you, you gotta run it back a hundred times I, ooh, <laughs> Friday Friday <laughs> Oh, my favorite. Yeah, Friday. That's me, too. Friday would be the, the first one. You can watch it I, front to back. When I tell you, I would be straight. Like, it would, nothing would matter. I could watch it ten times a day. And, exactly. And it's still, a, a part of it still make me laugh. So. Yeah. And yeah. Um, what TV, I'm saying you got the DVD collection of all seasons. All what TV seasons. show? Ooh, that's a hard one. All seasons. I'm going to have to go with Good Times. Good Times. Um, Why just Good Times? Because I don't, like, I just, my, I, don't, I think it's just growing up. That was one that my uncle, my uncle had all the seasons of Good Times. And it just, it would, if I'm on an island by myself, I need to be okay. And I need to create some nostalgia for me. So if I got a TV on an island, then I'm going to put Good Times on so I can feel oh. like I'm with my family. But like you at home, huh? Mm, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. that's interesting. Yes. Um, tell us about who you listen to currently on your on your time. On you my know. time. You just riding around or you're chilling in the crib? You know, my time. You? It depends on what I'm about to do. Like, okay. I'm big on. I'm a, I'm a mood listener because right now I don't want too much influence on my style. Mm -hmm. So I normally just listen to music if I'm like trying to turn up. Um, okay. Or if I'm trying to turn down, or you know, if I just need some background noise, which is not often, because I got enough noise up top. <laughs> <laughs> don't we so, all? So yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, who am I listening to? I don't know. That one's hard. Um, I like Future, but he Future got like, Hendrix. He got like, <laughs> but yeah, he's cool. Yeah, that's my guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, um, down to your personal music choices. Yeah. Um, when you're, you know, alone at home, what do you do to keep yourself busy? Is it about music, or is do you wind down when you get home, or what do you do? To keep myself busy? Um, to that's keep your mind really, going in general. My mind is always going. I don't, like, there's, <laughs> I'm trying to think, I don't really have to keep myself busy, because mm -hmm. I stay busy, if that makes okay. sense. Okay. <laughs> yep, yep, you work in person. Uh, yeah, like, I... I don't know. I, I mean, I write when I'm when I have the downtime and I have those creative thoughts. I write like that's my first thing. Like I gotta get this out, get on paper. I have like 500 voice memos in my phone. It's probably most of my storage space. Okay. Um. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. If like I got a, a down a downbeat, but most of the time Interesting. I'm calculating. And did the um <laughs> did the quarantine over this year? I know it affected a lot of people. Yeah. Did it slow down your trajectory in any way, or? Keep I you from think 
It's weird. Um, I am actually extremely grateful for the pandemic because I mm. felt like it forced the introspective moments where I actually had to spend time with myself and wow. understand who I was and my goals and my inner child. Like, I always go back to my inner child. Like, on my Instagram, like, the first picture is my, like, me graduating kindergarten because wow. that's my boss. Like, that's who I answer to because mm -hmm. that's what fuels you. So the pandemic kind of brought me to that moment where I realized the importance of that little me. Yeah. I got to serve little yeah. me. Can't forget about the little person nah. that you, you began, exactly. you know? And that's that's really interesting. Yeah, this pandemic has slowed down a lot of artists, and it mm -hmm. seems like you still found a way to keep going. Yeah. So what are some of the things you did? Uh, did you say you did a live stream show? Uh, yeah, I did a, a Instagram live show. It was with, his name's like Steven Valentine, but he's mm -hmm. a poet, and he was hosting those. Um, I went live myself a couple times and did like a couple like, living room concerts if you will um people tuned in that was kind of fun that's good um what else did i do over the pandemic i really just was creating like the pandemic was where like i said introspection and and getting it out like writing it down and creating what i wanted and the vision that i am walking in now okay interesting yeah. interesting and that's that's really uplifting to a lot of people because some people felt like maybe they didn't live their purpose through the pandemic maybe yeah. they got their money they lost it they yeah. you know they didn't know what they were doing during that time oh, so yeah. it was, it's it good was, you made the most of it I, yeah i was at, I'm at, i was a flight attendant so the reason i was moving around that's what i was doing mm -hmm. and the pandemic sat me down right. um which was when i started flying was when i stopped doing music because you can go anywhere in the world you kind of forget about what your goals are because it's like I could be anywhere anytime like okay. you know so it was good that I got furloughed because I got to work on me okay so back to the music yeah how would you describe your music to someone who never heard of you say you met a big artist in the you know where in the airport tournament on <laughs> and you just said you had to had let them know you were an artist how would you describe your music to that person um I would tell them my music it's a vibe like that's the first thing and that's probably so cliche but I feel like with my music you'll feel it before you hear it like I want to see you bouncing I want to feel like you, you don't even know what you you don't even realize what you bounce into and then you be like oh wait wow it sound good and she's saying good stuff like I like it so I would it's a sneak attack vibe is how I would describe it like okay I'm gonna sneak up on you with some some fire. All right. Well, <laughs> that's that's interesting, <laughs> and that would sell me. You know, yeah. I would go take a so listen after, after that. I'd have to see what that's about. You know, <laughs> but uh, interesting enough, um, you're very you're very attractive. What is one of the things that people always, you know, get enamored about you? Like, um, what is what is one of your characteristics, or just something in appearance wise that people can't get enough of? <laughs> I know it's uh, a weird question. <laughs> Let me say. Um, if we're gonna take a personality, I am like one of the most patient people you'll meet. Okay. So, and I think people are always impressed by that because pretty girls normally don't have too much patience. Like normally, we want it, we want it now, we want it here. We, you don't, we don't got the time. But normally, people are like, "Wow, like you're so patient." And I'm okay. Just like yeah, you know, patience is a virtue. It is. I, I respect that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most women could be impatient at times, you know. We <laughs> yes. all deal with it. Yeah, yeah. But you know, that's special. Um yeah. I would say what what would you describe your style as fashion wise? Um, fashion wise, I mean for me, I'm really big on like how I feel. Like I dress mm -hmm. with my mood. Like today I was like I want my aura to shine bright. So I was like, I'm wearing my aura dress. <laughs> um, but like okay. other days I might, you know, have on like I'm gonna wear some some nice sneakers but I'm gonna have on like a sweat outfit. Like yesterday I had that on and I and I had a cap. Um so I'm really big on just I dress based off my energy. Mm -hmm. Whatever I wanna present to you when I first meet you meet you is how I'm dressing for that day. If I'm okay with the world meeting me this way today that's how it is and if i'm okay, okay with them meeting me differently that's what i do designer are designer. you into designer oh is it your thing i mean you know who doesn't like a, a louis bag or wallet <laughs> um but i'm not big on designers i feel like um i'm gonna probably purchase like 
a tell a, was it tell far bag versus okay. like I mean mind you I got like I got a Louis now but it's just like I'm not big on it I don't care right. that much it's like it's a status symbol when it comes to designers I feel like so for me I'm not I don't it doesn't matter much because I want you to perceive me based off of what I present to yeah. you versus what I have on yeah when you walk in the room you look at yourself exactly. as the more valuable thing so yes that's a good way to um, move through this world where people are more into the fashion, yeah. more into what you have, clout. Yeah. Um, I feel I feel as though you take a more down to earth approach, yeah. which is very respectable. Um, moving past fashion, um, tell us about your family. Has anybody gotten you into music or gave you that spark? Do you have any other musicians in the family? Yeah, I mean, my mom, girl, my mom told me she was singing to me in the womb, like Prince. And I think that's why I, 80s and 70s, I loved that music. But my mother was a big inspiration because she was like an artist, but she never, you know, got there. So she would just sing through the house all the time. Um, I wake up, I mean, I feel like every black mama does this, but you wake up on Saturday morning and there's music playing mm -hmm. and you annoy because it's Saturday and you sleep in, but it's the cleaning the house music. No, you're going to get up so, and clean exactly, something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ain't no sleeping. Exactly, yeah. So, yep. like, my mom was a big influence in keeping me so close to music, but I've always loved it. Okay, that's, that's, that's interesting. That's really, like, a lot of people's upcoming. Yeah. And it's just so interesting that you took the approach to really take the music serious. Mm -hmm. So has there been anybody in your family that really has encouraged you or basically just supported you from the start? You, you know? Yeah, I mean, my, my mom, like I said, biggest supporter. My uncle, who is a realist. Uh, at one point, uh, like when I was in high school, he's like, hey, I'm going to be your manager. But he was like real... You know how an older man is just gonna tell you what to do all the time. Yeah. He's just like, all right, um, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think you want what I want. So. You can't have too many chefs in the kitchen. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. So I respect you know, it. But the family has been supportive. Like when I dropped my project, it was like, Naya, we need the link. Uh, you okay. know. So it's nice to have that support. So tell us about your friends. Are you a friendly person or? Oh yeah, okay. I'm real friendly. You okay. know, like I got I got girls. We do things. We have fun. Turn up. <laughs> <laughs> gotta have your crew, huh? Right. Gotta have the crew that ride for you. Um, and I think uh, having the right people around you is really important to Definitely. get where you need to go to. So you gotta yep. make sure you keep the people around you who really want to be around you around. Right. Right. Gotta be mutual. Yes. I, I respect that. Yes. All right, we're going to wrap things up, but I just want to ask a couple final questions. Mm -hmm. um, why should people care about your music? Why should be people care about that? Yeah, because, I mean, my music, I feel like my goal is to feed your soul with things that you didn't know you needed. So when I write, I'm very conscious of what I'm putting into your spirit because mm -hmm. people don't realize, like, the vibe is not just a vibe. It's what you're going to take and present to the world as well um and i care so much about that i want people to uh enjoy that and like really feel different like i wanted to feel good or i wanted to get you through that tough time so people should care because i care about them wow <laughs> <laughs> now how could you hate this person she's, she's amazing um all right lastly what would you like the people to, you know, do you have anything you want to share with the people? Do you have anything you want them to go, go listen to? Or yes, yeah. what would you want to share with the people? Um, so Phases, it just dropped this month. Um, it is out on all streaming platforms, so go check it out. Um, it's a five-song EP, but it'll take you through some phases, and you will enjoy it, I promise. All right. We're signing out. This has been OTR Films, Breaking the Ice. And this is Naya Jene. All right. Be <laughs> <Peace> out. <laughs> <laughs>